Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and you've reached the Book of Mormon Lecture Series. I've been teaching seminary and institute for the last 11 years, and uh, this is an attempt to do a deep dive into the Book of Mormon itself. I'm hoping that you'll find this uplifting and edifying. This is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but every attempt has been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. So if you're ready for a deep dive into the Book of Mormon, here we go. Hi, welcome back to the Book of Mormon podcast. This is going to be Mosiah chapter 19. And uh, let me just read you a couple things here. This is about the time that uh, some of the Nephites are into bondage, but I want to read some things here about this. Bondage is not always marked by the clanging of literal chains or the shouts of overseers. In mortality, we often know bondage that is just as restricting, dimming our days and our hopes for happiness. The chains may be resentments of, or pride that take the shine off of life. Walls may be built brick by brick uh, in disappoint, as disappointment and failed expectations mount and our will slacks. Tragedy, sin, or ill health may stalk above us like overseers demanding our attention. To be mortal is to know pain and weakness, to taste disappointment like ashes in your mouth, to sin and face its bitter consequences. That is why the experiences of two groups of people who suffer and toil at the hands of Lamanites, masters in these chapters of Mosiah, are about us. Who has not known some form of bondage and who has not yearned for escape or at least relief? The different experiences of these two groups teaches us something about escaping bondage that can apply directly to us. And that was by Scott and Maureen Proctor. There are several instances in the Book of Mormon where people were in bondage. In this story, King Limhi's people and Alma's people were in bondage in fulfillment of Abinadi's prophecies. Abinadi's prophecy is still in force today and will occur if, it, if we don't do the things mentioned in Mosiah chapter 7. Turn to the Lord with full purpose of heart, trust in the Lord, and serve the Lord with diligence of mind. Chapters 19 to 22 were taken from the record of Zenith. These chapters teach us how to deal with our enemies. So remember that there's another set of plates uh, by Zenith's people here, and we'll get more into that later. Chapter 19, verse 1, And it came to pass that the army of the king returned, having searched in vain for the people of the Lord. And now, behold, the forces of the king were small, having been reduced, and there began to be a division among the, re the remainder of the people. It appears that there were factions dividing the people. It may be that those who previously followed Zenith and Abinadi had persuaded others to follow them after Abinadi's death, reducing those who supported King Noah. Verse 3, And the lesser part began to breathe out threatenings against the king, and there began to be a great contention among them. And now there was a man among them whose name was Gideon, and he being a strong man and an enemy to the king, King Noah, therefore he drew his sword and swore in his wrath that he would slay the king. Gideon must have been a military man he who may have had responsibilities around the king's palace to have heard the teachings of Abinadi. Verse 5, And it came to pass that he fought with the king, and when the king saw that he was about to overpower him, he fled and ran and got upon the tower, which was near the temple. Now, oftentimes we, we see pictures of Noah um, as a large, maybe an overweight person. Uh, however, in this, where he's running away from Gideon, who's probably in pretty good shape, Noah was probably in good shape too, shape to fight off a military man and have sufficient time to run away. He was probably not the overweight person depicted in pictures. At least that's my opinion. Verse 6, And Gideon pursued after him and was about to get upon the tower to slay the king. And the king cast his eyes round about towards the land of Shemlon. And behold, the army of the Lamanites were within the borders of the land. And now the king cried out in the, in the anguish of his soul, saying, Gideon, spare me, for the Lamanites are upon us, and they will destroy us, yea, they will destroy my people. And now the king was not so much concerned about his people as he was about his own life. Nevertheless, Gideon did spare his life. Gideon realized that even a bad king was necessary in time of crisis, so he spared his life. And the king commanded the people that they should flee before the Lamanites, and he himself did go before them. And they did flee into the wilderness with their women and their children. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did pursue them and did overtake them and began to slay them. It was probably easier for the Lamanites to attack a fleeing group of people than the organized military men of Gideon who, was, who were defending the city. Now it came to pass that the king commanded them that all the men should, ha should leave their wives and their children and flee before the Lamanites. Now there were many that would not leave them, but had rather stay and perish with them, and the rest left th their wives and their children and fled. Noah is uh, basically a coward. 
and the priests of Noah too. And it came to pass that there that those who tarried with their wives and their children caused that their fair daughters should stand forth and plead with the Lamanites that they would not slay them. And it came to pass that the Lamanites had compassion on them, for they were charmed with the beauty of their women. Therefore the Lamanites did spare their, their lives and took them captives and carried them back to the land of Nephi and granted them to them that they might possess the land under the conditions that they would deliver up King Noah into the hands of the Lamanites and deliver up their property, even one half of all they possessed, one half of their gold and their silver and all their precious things. And thus they should pay tribute to the king of the Lamanites from year to year. In other words, this is a pretty heavy tax. And now there was one of the sons of, of the king among, who, among those that were taken captive, whose name was Limhi. Limhi would have fled with Noah and the rest of, the fam of his family and loyalists. We find out later that Limhi's character is much better than his father's. With the future king captured, the city also fell into Lamanite hands. And now Limhi was desirous that his father should not be destroyed. Nevertheless, Limhi was not ignorant of the iniquities of his father, he himself being a just man. And it came to pass that Gideon sent men into the wilderness secretly. This may mean that the men were sent without Limhi's knowledge, or they were sent to find Noah cautiously, to search for the king and those that were with him. And it came to pass that they met the people of, in the wilderness, all save the king and his priests. Now they had sworn in their hearts that they would return to the land of Nephi, and if their wives and their children were slain, and also those that had tarried with them, that they would, they would seek revenge and also perish with them. And the king commanded them that they should not return, and they were angry with the king, and caused that he should suffer even unto death by fire. And they were about to take the priests also and put them to death, and they fled before them. And it came to pass that they were about to return to the land of Nephi, and they met the men of Gideon. And the men of Gideon told them of all that had happened to their wives and their children, and that the Lamanites had granted unto them that they might possess the land by paying a tribute to the Lamanites of one half of all they possessed. This tribute was probably used to support those who guarded them. And the people told the men of Gideon that they, that they had slain the king, and his priests had fled from before them farther into the wilderness. And it came to pass that after they had ended the ceremony, now there's an interesting thing that's going on, what's happened here? These are two opposing parties that come together. The ceremony they have is like smoking the peace pipe, a peace ceremony of some kind, a treaty. It was some way of re to reconcile themselves to each other. So these two groups of people, the ones that fled and the army of Gideon are coming together now so that they can live together. Uh, continuing verse 24, that they returned to the land of Nephi rejoicing because their wives and their children were not slain. And they told Gideon what, that, what they had done to the king. And it came to pass that the king of the Lamanites made an oath unto them that his people should not slay them. And also Limhi, being the son of the king, having the kingdom conferred upon him by the people, if the people had known of Noah's death, Limhi would have automatically become king. The fact that the people make him king shows that they did not yet know of Noah's death. Uh, continuing verse 26, made oath unto the king of the Lamanites that his people should pay tribute unto him, even one half of all they possessed. And it came to pass that Limhi began to establish the kingdom and to establish peace among his people. And the king of the Lamanites sent guards or set guards round about the land. This is to make sure they keep them, uh, keep their treaty, that he might keep the people of Limhi in the land, that they might not depart into the wilderness. And he did support his guards out of the tribute which he did receive from the Nephites. And now King Limhi did have continual peace in his kingdom for the space of two years that the Lamanites did not molest them nor seek to destroy them. Isn't it interesting that uh, Limhi is able to, uh, to rule over his kingdom even though they're in captivity by the Lamanites? Something a little different uh, than what we would expect in our day. I bear testimony to the truth of the Book of Mormon that this is translated material and that we're reading um, this story here that was written by, by Zenith's people. And I bear that testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. See you next time.